What we're going to be looking at here is a payout ratio. That's the ratio of cash dividends to net income. And that's the percent of earnings distributed as dividends here. Okay, so we're going to be looking at these current year financials here where the company has cash of 390000 preferred stock 6% cumulative $50 par for 600000 and they have common stock no par here, 300000 shares issued for $3 million. And then they're going to have a treasury stock. They're going to have 2,800 shares here at at the cost of the common stock here for $67,200 and then they have retained earnings of $210,000. Okay so what we have for our dividends here we're going to have a preferred stock dividends in arrears here one year they have to pay back one year late here on their preferred stock dividends again that's at that 6% dividend rate and then for the current year dividends uh, they've, uh, that we're going to be paid here they're going to have the per preferred stock at that 6% dividend rate and then on their common stock they're going to pay 60 cents per share here of common stock. And then the net income for the current year is estimated to be $700,000. Now, we also what we have to do when we're dealing with these payout ratios here, we have to determine what the net income is available here to the common stock shareholders. And we're going to look at how we calculated that, but it will take our net income here for the uh, estimated for the year here at 700000 and then we have to subtract out our preferred stock dividends, which we'll calculate here to be 72000 So our net income available here for our payout to our common stock shareholders is 628000 Okay, so this is our general equation here, or formula here for uh, what they call our payout ratio here. So we're going to have our cash dividends uh, uh, for a common stock here. Those are the cash dividends paid on the common stock. And then we're, we're going to have to determine what our net income available is, which we did here at 628000 But uh, general equation here, you take your net income here for the year here, but you'd have to subtract out your preferred stock dividends that were paid here. So this is a general formula for a payout ratio here. Cash dividends for the common stock uh, divided by the net income here for the year less any preferred stock dividends that are going to be paid out. And this payout ratio here uh, we'll calculate that here, but we're going to go through it uh, by our accounts here. And that's really the percent of earnings distributed as a common stock dividend. So everything has to be, lo we are looking at in terms of our common stock, where we have to re reduce the uh, payout here or our net income by the preferred stock dividends. Okay, so let's go down and look at what we're talking about here. We're going to have this cash account here, and that's going to be for our cash dividend payout here. And then we're going to have our retained earnings account. That's our where it be our dividends paid and then we also have this treasury stock that we have to account for. You know, what we're really going to be looking at here and we'll first calculate our dividends for both our preferred stock and our common stock but you have to look at when you're working with these payout ratios to wonder why it's either high or low here you have to look at to see if there's it was cash available here to pay these dividends and whether there's retained earnings here to pay the dividends so uh, if either of these are low here you can't pay the, the div if they're below what has to be paid out in dividends then you can't pay the dividends and that would reduce your payout ratio here and in the other case here you can have your retained earnings can be very high here the company is retaining these earnings and they may not be paying out a lot of uh, cash dividends here so uh, uh, for common stock so then again your payout ratio would be low so let's go to our problem here so let's look at it in terms of our start out with our retained earnings here for the dividends paid to calculate that so we're going to start out with that two hundred and ten thousand dollars that we have in our retained earnings but then we have a set aside here for treasury stock legal requirement here for the cost of treasury stock has to be we have to reduce our retained earnings that are available here for the payout by the amount of that cost of the treasury stock so we come up with retained earnings here of 142,800 for the that's available here for payout after our set aside here for the treasury stock now this is our payout here our um, dividends here we're going to have the preferred stock in arrears and then the preferred stock dividend for the year here and then our common stock dividend. So we have to calculate, have to determine what those uh, pay, uh, what those dividends are here. So for a preferred stock, we have 600000 times that 6% dividend rate. So we have 36000 So uh, we would debit or reduce our retained earnings here by 36000 That's for the dividends and arrears of one year here. And then also for the current year dividend here, same amount here, 36000 So we'd reduce our re debit or reduce our retained earnings by that amount. 
well. Okay, now for our common stock dividend. So we have those 300,000 shares outstanding, uh, 60 cents per share dividend rate on declared here. So that's $180,000. So here we go. We reduce our retained earnings here by 180,000. And just for our example here, you're going to find out that we have a deficit here in our retained earnings by $109,000. $200 had we paid out this total cash dividend here for the common stock. But uh, therefore, we would not have enough money to pay the a retained earning or the dividend here based on what's available in our retained earnings. But in this case, we look at our net income for the year. We add that in here, increase our retained earnings by 700000 So we wipe out the deficit, and then we have enough to pay the cash uh, dividends here for both the preferred stock here in our common stock and we still end up with a balance here in a retained earnings of five hundred ninety thousand eight hundred dollars now moving over here we've debited our retained earnings here in our balance sheet equity account here and then the credit amount associated credit amount would go to those cash dividends that are paid here and we got we started out with that three hundred ninety thousand in our uh, in our cash account here then we would reduce it here by for the preferred stock in arrears at 36,000 here, preferred stock dividend for the current year here at 36,000, and then our common stock dividend here, uh, 180,000. So here we had enough cash, we reduced our cash account here, and we ended up with a balance of $138,000. But what we're looking at here with this payout ratio here is we have to separate out those preferred stock dividends here from the common stock dividend because the preferred stock dividends, that payout ratio is based on what the common stock shareholders would have available for the payout. But um, that's 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 what we're gonna we'll go up and look at our formula again here. But again, when we're dealing with these dividends here, you have to look at that cash account, see if there's enough cash in it, and to pay the dividends here. And preferred stock dividends always get paid ahead of the common stock dividends. Both any anything in arrears here or the current year gets paid a, ahead of common stock. So if there isn't enough cash here uh, to pay all the common stock, then and there is enough to pay to preferred stock, then the, you would reduce it here by the amount for the preferred stock. But uh, those are just some things that you have to look at when we're going to be dealing with these cash dividends here, or these payout ratios, to wonder why maybe the uh, total common stock wasn't paid out and uh, why they might have a low payout ratio. It's maybe because they don't have enough cash after paying any preferred stock. And then moving over to our retained earnings here, again, same thing here. If you don't have enough sitting in your retained earnings, you can't pay out your dividends. And again, preferred stock gets paid ahead of um, the common stock dividend. So those are some of the things you have to look at in these dividend uh, payout ratios. And then the other thing, uh, uh, what you might want to look at here is the amount that's sitting in retained earnings. Say a company accumulates a whole lot in retained earnings and they never, they have a very low dividend payout ratio here. So uh, at least for the uh, common stock ratio, then they would have, then you'd wonder, wonder why the payout ratio is low, but it may be that they got a lot of retained earnings. They just want to save it for other reasons. Okay, so let's move back up to our payout ratio here. Okay, again, we talked about uh, the fact here that those that's based on the cash dividends for our common stock. In this case, it was 180,000. We calculated that down here to be 180,000. That was those 300,000 shares times 60 cents per share dividend right here. So that is strictly based on the cash dividends here of the common stock. And then uh, what's available here, the, the payout ratio is based on what's available. We had that total uh, net income for the year here of 700,000, but it had to be reduced by the preferred stock dividends. And we had the 36000 in arrears here and then $36,000 for the current year here. So what is, this is this is the key here. When you're p figuring out these payout ratios, you have to determine what's of net income that's available here for the common stock shareholders. And that's uh, where it starts out with whatever net income you have for the year here, less any preferred stock dividends.
Okay, so that takes care of our payout ratio here. So if when you have to start analyzing this payout ratio, you have to look both at uh, what's available here in retained earnings, see if, they, if the company had enough to pay those dividends here, and then you also have to look at the cash account, see if there's enough paid in, in the um, available here to pay the dividends here. And then the other thing is, you have to look at your preferred stock. That has to be separated out in both cases here. Why, when you're looking at these, um, this payout ratio here, just remember the preferred stock dividends has to be. You reduce your net income here, um, your net income here by the div, uh, preferred stock dividends when you're uh, determining your payout ratio. Okay, so that takes care of that payout ratio. Just remember what it what it involves here. Cash dividends that's paid on the common stock for the year here, uh, and then you take your net income that's for the year here, and you'd have to subtract out any of those preferred stock dividends. Okay, so that takes care of our payout ratio here, and just a little bit of an analysis on it.